Welcome to my video. I'm Lowry, the Pretty Potsy, and today I really want to speak on what is POTS, why we feel the way we feel, and what causes some of our symptoms. These are things that I wish someone had told me when I first found out that I had POTS about two years ago, but I have spent two years learning and adapting, and I would like to share a little bit of sort of my POTS and what happens in my body and what my symptoms are. And it might help you get a better understanding if you have POTS, if you've just been diagnosed, if you think maybe you have POTS. And also if you're watching this and you know someone who has POTS, this might help you understand the way that they're feeling and why and ways to make um, them feel better. So, um, Basically, POTS is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's an autonomic nervous system um, dysfunction. So it can be called a form of dysautonomia. And our autonomic nervous system, it deals with things in the body that happen without us even thinking about it. Our digestion, our circulation, our heart rate, our breathing. There's so many things involved in that system. And if you have POTS, that system doesn't work properly. So a lot of the symptoms that you have when you have POTS really kind of go with the autonomic nervous system dysfunction. But there are other symptoms with POTS that have to do with the lack of blood to the brain. And I've been able to isolate which symptom goes with which and I can learn if I'm feeling a certain symptom, what I need to do to feel better. I want to just sort of start off with POTS 101. If you have POTS, your vascular system doesn't work properly and your blood vessels, they don't send the blood back up. So when us POTSies stand up, the blood pools in our legs and our feet. And people without POTS, your vessels constrict and they keep the blood up. Even if you're standing, they sort of um, negate the effects of gravity. But when you have POTS, your vessels do not constrict in your blood pools and your legs and your feet. As soon as that happens, your heart reacts by going faster. And it beats faster because your body notices that you're not getting enough blood in your brain. You're not getting enough blood to your head. And when your heart beats faster, it doesn't really move the blood because your vessels aren't working in conjunction with it. So a lot of people who have POTS, when your heart beats faster, you get fatigued really easily and you also have tachycardia. Some people feel like, you know, their chest is palpitating or their heart is just working too hard. And that's because it is. Um, I want to illustrate sort of what happens when a POTS stand up. Um, so bear with me. I'm going to check my heart rate, okay? It's 63 right now, 63 beats a minute. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to stand up. You may not be able to see all of me. In fact, I'll just maybe scoot back a little bit, okay? So already my heart, I feel it racing. It was 63 beats a minute, and I'm just gonna stand here. I'm not moving my legs at all. I feel dizzy, a little bit lightheaded, and definitely out of breath. Right now my heart rate is 140, okay? So it went from 63 to 140 uh, in less than a minute. Um, when you have POTS, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna sit. Whew. Some days are worse than others, okay guys? It doesn't always go up that high. Um, it's 134 right now. So all I have to do is stand up and my heart races as if I'm running a marathon. Whew. Um, it'll start going back down. But that, that is a way that you, it's, they call it kind of the poor man's tilt test. If you get your heart, beat, heart rate sitting down and then you get it standing up, if you have an increase as an adult of at least 30 beats per minute, um, then that is a sign that you could have POTS. Now some people have, um, a higher heart rate when they stand up, but they don't have any symptoms um, and they may not have POTS. So it's not a definite, but it is a sign that you could have POTS. 
I do want to talk a little bit about some of the symptoms that come hand in hand with getting a higher heart rate. And I think I've mentioned it in this video, but fatigue is huge. If you have POTS, you're probably always tired. Um, I'm out of breath just standing up for like a minute and doing simple things that, that I took for granted before I had POTS become a huge task. Doing the dishes, you stand in one place and you're also moving your arms and you're also being active. So my heart rate can get 160, 170, just doing the dishes, doing laundry is very difficult. Um, so because the blood is pooling in our legs and our feet and it's not getting to our brains, a lot of our symptoms have to do with lack of blood flow to the brain. If you imagine that you're really hungover, okay, this is a good way to sort of compare it to, to normal life, something that other people without POTS can understand. When you're hungover, you've drank too much alcohol and your body is dehydrated. And when your body is dehydrated, you don't have um, a lot of blood, okay? So what do you do when you're hungover? You drink electrolytes and those help rehydrate you and help build up your blood volume. And so those feelings that you have when you're hungover, um, really tired, you can be really irritable, you can have a bad headache, um, you can have brain fog, you just feel awful, nauseous, you may want to throw up. Um, when you have POTS, you pretty much feel hungover all the time because you always have that deficit of blood in your brain. Even while I'm sitting right now, my vessels are not returning the blood up to my brain. And so a lot of the effects that I feel are because of that. So I might go out one day and say, stand in line at the bank for 10 minutes and go grocery shopping for an hour and I can do it. I don't pass out. I have learned little tips and tricks. Um, one thing is if I'm standing in line, I sway. So I'm moving my feet back and forth and I'm pumping my legs and that's sort of helping to support the veins and just to get a little bit more blood back up into my brain. Um, I have people ask me all the time if I'm a dancer because I'm flexing my toes and I'm pointing you know, my legs and I'm kind of dancing around but it's just because I have POTS and that's one of my coping mechanisms when I'm standing, when you have to stand, because sometimes you have to stand, then I will move my feet around. So let me go back to what I was saying. If, you, if I have a really busy day, I'm standing in line at the bank, I'm at the grocery store for an hour and I come home, I may be really tired, but I'm not going to feel the effects of the lack of blood to the brain until the next day. And the next day, my brain is not going to work very well because it's the after effect of not having enough blood the day before. Um, this is a big thing for me to understand that you have an event one day and you're going to feel the effects of it the next day, similar to having a hangover. So the day after I do something like standing in line, um, even going to a party where I'm standing and having conversations with someone, any of those things that we do that have us standing, that's gonna mean that we have lack of blood to the brain. And so for the next day, I wake up and sometimes I don't even wanna get out of bed. I have a lot of problems word finding. Um, even in my videos, you might hear me say the wrong word. Um, it's hard for me sometimes to word find if I've had a really busy long day the day before. And so things that we can do to prevent that is plan accordingly. So try to just do one big thing in a day. I always wear my compression socks. I always wear tight pants, but on a day where I know I'm going to be out and about, I will load up on extra sodium and extra fluids that day. And that might help me to feel a little bit better the next day. I try not to plan more than one or two things in a week, which to, I used to do. I used to work full time and, you know, I always cooked every meal for my family. We don't eat out I have two kids. My husband went through cancer. I am a busy, busy girl. And now I think about it, planning two things in one week. When I used to do 10 things in a day, it's very difficult, but we have to do it. 
we have to put a limit on what we're doing. Otherwise, you know, we won't be able to get out of bed for a week. And people can see me, they can see me at an event, they can see me at a party and I look just fine. I can stand, I can talk, I don't pass out. A lot of times when I am in a public situation and I'm standing a lot, um, I have another trick that I do is I crouch down. And I just bend down a little bit, but it sort of puts my brain lower and kind of gets some blood to my brain. I have learned how I feel before I pass out. Um, when I have syncope or pre-syncope is what they call it, um, I, and I just had a brain fog. <laughs> this is POTS, folks. Um, I know right before I'm going to pass out, so I know to bend down. I've really learned to listen to my body and focus on the limitations of my body and try not to push it. But there are days when you have to get things done and you have to do things and you will notice the next day will be more difficult. Um, just like when you work out, you may be sore the next day or the day after that. So if you keep that mentality and understand you know, what your limits are, it will make things a lot easier for you to manage your POTS. Um, also, I want to make another video. I won't talk about it all in this video, but there are a lot of triggers for POTS. And you will learn what your body triggers are and things that make you feel worse. And really, my best advice is to pay attention to your body. Pay attention to the way you feel and don't overdo it. Just start small. Um, in my other video, I talked about exercise. Exercise is very important when you have POTS and it helps keep that blood flowing and returning to your brain. Um, a lot of the symptoms of lack of blood to the brain are things that really don't involve the autonomic nervous system. When I'm having an especially bad day, I almost feel like someone has dipped my brain in ice water. It's really hard to describe it. But if you think about it, if you don't have enough blood in your brain, the vessels in your brain, they're, they're not as plump, okay? They're more shriveled. And if you were to dip your brain in ice water, your vessels would constrict. So I think that's almost a way to understand why I feel like someone's dipped my brain in ice water. I can't drink cold drinks. Um, my whole body gets freezing. Um, if I drink hot coffee or hot tea, my whole body gets really warm. Your temperature regulation also is your autonomic uh, nervous system. So I can have a temperature from 97 to 101 on any given day. It doesn't mean I'm sick. It doesn't mean I have a fever. It's just part of the POTS. Um, I could go on and on about symptoms, but I will keep this video um, not too long. Um, but a lot of pot symptoms can be isolated. Some are from your autonomic nervous system dysfunction and some are from lack of blood to the brain. If I've had a day where I feel horrible and I just, I just can't think of words, I can't really get out of bed, my legs, they feel like jelly because my brain knows, hey, don't get up. You don't have enough blood, don't stand upright. So your body reacts like my legs feel like jelly. On those days, because of lack of blood to the brain, I can't take big stimulus. I can't take loud noises. I really can't handle um, anything. You know, I have to have my kids be really quiet on those days. And it's almost surreal, the feeling in your brain when it's doesn't have enough blood in it. I'm really anxious to hear about your symptoms, things that you've noticed with your POTS and ways that you have helped yourself because maybe it'll help me. Um, I'm here to just kind of share what I've learned in the past two years having POTS, what works for me. This was my video on symptoms and why. I hope this has helped a little bit and please subscribe and I will be putting out lots of other videos. I want to do a video on triggers for POTS and I want to do a video on nutrition because nutrition has really helped my life and helped me managing my symptoms. Um, thank you so much for watching today. Hopefully I didn't bore you. I 
just wanted to impart so much information in such a little amount of time. I appreciate you sticking around. I'm Lowry the Pretty Potsy, and I hope you're having a great day.